All right, so I'm going to just keep right on going with these uh, these readings because they're just kind of coming out as they will. So this is for Divine Feminine. I'm going to start with the Sofan Chan Buddha Dhamma Oracle deck. I got some really good readings from this earlier this week. Yep, that's that. Um, let's see what needs to be recognized. Divine feminine energies, please. Divine feminine energies. Ooh, okay. Um, kind of a lot just came out. Uh, I'm not going to take all that because that's quite a few cards here. Um, like more clear, concise energy than that, please. Just one, two, and three cards. Sensory desires. This is number five. Something is changing for you, Divine Feminine. Um, five is the number of change. It's laughter. It's that guttural, primitive, really like sincere laughter that kind of feeds the soul, if you will. It's um finding something genuinely like just that tickles you pink, literally. Okay. Um th th <laughs> there we have eight, number eight, restless mind in the reverse. So this is something that's so intriguing to you. It's like a, a new line of study or it's a new um, hobby that you've now, um, become proficient at enough to the point where you're like, <sighs> there's all these potential, uh, outcomes that you could, you know, kind of piece and put together. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle, but there at the bottom of the deck is number 33, do not steal. And then there's also clouded mind in reverse. So you really can't steal from somebody who's having, like, original thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're tapped into their thought process, quite literally. But that would take quite a bit of um, proving to say that you are the original owner. Yes, this is pleasure and pain in reverse, along with self-flagellating mind. So there's something that you're not creating. It is literally there. I wouldn't say it's neither here nor there, but it is literally exists. That's what I'm saying. This is number one. This is number 24. So this is one, two, and four, all in the reverse. Um, if this was some figment of your imagination, and I do want to say figgy pudding, um, then this would be pleasure and pain being your number one focus would be the kind of chicken brain, um, autonomic nervous system, if you will, and your self-flagellating mind would take off from there. You would be running without facts. This is a, um, I want to say a rapid increase because it's like, you know, the, the Fibonacci sequence is one, one, two, three. This is one, two, four. And this is like a the condensed same version, same, same, you know, same, same, but totally different, completely, completely different. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've got here. So bottom of the deck, we have self-flagellating mind. You yourself are your own obstacle. Rise above yourself. This was in reverse. So this is a great thing. Um, we have sensory desires, number five. Then we've got number eight in the reverse, restless mind and pleasure and pain. So this is actually showing a proficiency, divine feminine, for being able to find um, the small parts and pieces of your life that make a lot of difference on a little scale or on the little scheme of things, if you will. So there's really like this, your, your mind is not really restless. You're just constantly 
um, taking the Play-Doh and making it into a different sculpture to demonstrate exactly how pleasure and pain can coincide and become one another rather than having to be mutually exclusive, right? And that's the way that we're getting over our self-flagellating mind, which is oftentimes just a whole bunch of ego that is overgrown and completely um, dominated the garden, not in its presence, but just more in its actual intensity. And I completely get that because I've got to constantly prune myself. It's just, you know, understanding exactly how much care how much energy, how much time and effort you're willing to put into a particular activity, um, using the toolbox that you're given uh, toward the propensity that you can use it. Otherwise, uh, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. So this is a signs of personal growth coming right out. I do want to say this is like one of my favorite kind of small clutches. Anyway, this is the page of wands. And the signs of growth have everything to do with this self-flagellating mind being in reverse. So rather than having, um, there was quite a bit last month about using a reactive or an emotional reactive mind to make decisions. Um, there's something about personal growth having happen swiftly. And it's like a, a stealthy, I almost, I don't know why I'm not seeing the word steal clearly today. I'm just seeing stealth. Okay. There's something about like, a, yeah, conceptual mind being in the upright directly underneath that. Do no harm being number 32. And then we go back into the reverse. So I'll stop there. Um, this is number 32, number 33, and number 16 all in a row. This is understanding that doing no harm means not to be stealthy or um, to omission omitting something is just as damaging to the conceptual mind, number 16, as any other aspect. This is number 24 in the reverse, and this is the sign of personal growth. So all things being equal, uh, this would be your ability and your, your right almost as a a female to assert yourself. The assertion of self, you see how stealth just came out again? There's something about like really this being under the radar. It's not a, this is not something that could ever be um, I'm just going to say this is sense eight coming out right here. This is your sensory desires. And then this is number eight, the restless mind. That's when your mind wanders. But all, not all who wander are lost. So that being the case, if you are, then there's a specific knowing of self, of, of that I, of the mind, of the, um, you know, the, centrifugal force that keeps all of the parts and pieces of us that are floating around. It's kind of like the astral belt. It scares the living daylights out of us enough to the point where we either salute and bow down, become submissive to it, or we become centrally um, able to grow beyond it. Not in a bad way, just in a way that accepts the limitations of uh, a red light, stopping for a red light, that level of exertion to stop a car versus to start a car moving forward. There is a comparison point and depending on your system, 
there will be a trade-off of energy that is stealthy. If you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. It's like a rubber band effect. But just subliminally subverted on the subway and stuff. So that's the desire to do no harm. This is with number, it's the first one in the, the, the row right here, right? Five and 32. Then we've got eight in the reverse and 32. Without a restless mind, that's when you do no harm. And then this pleasure and pain has already been experienced. So maybe that's the reason why it no longer does harm. Sounds redundant, but for some reason it needs to be said that many times. So this is the ugly truth coming out with sensory desires. Yeah, like your mind will literally create for itself its own map of what is, what are your addictions? What are your um, aversions? What are your aspirations? What's your pulse? What's the rate of your breathing? Quite literally. So that's the point is the input and the output um, is the the red and the blue blood, right? Inside of your heart. Depends on if it's oxygenated or not. That's the only difference. It's all the same substance. So that's the ugly truth is that everyone has both the propensity for both at least, right? Whether they used to learn or whether they used to have the opportunity to absorb the knowledge needed to integrate the two sides of self in order to see, you know, significant personal growth. That's that's the part that we don't know about. This is the unleash strange phenomenon, emphasis on honesty. This is the six of swords. So this is moving forward from something. Yeah, so the the four four of pence over here kind of just says like holding on. Somebody's holding on to the ugly truth because it's actually the the genuine map. It's the genuine way to go. It's a if you can kind of see it's like a why factor, but it it goes like topsy turvy. I don't know. We don't know how it came out of the bag. It just now it gets to exist wherever it wants to. However, so does this uh, water molecule. It's like an amoeba, right? So it will accept this thing on its terms. And that's the emphasis on honesty. Coming out with restless mind in the reverse. This can't be a, a spur of the moment whim. It's more of like... um. It's not even luck, it's blessings. So this uh, restless mind in the upright says, be wise, don't let the monkey mind run the show for too long. True happiness cannot be realized without setting your heart, mind, and body in unity and in harmony. That's by Sofan. It says monkeys love to hop from tree to tree with one more thing to get, do, or eat. This restless energy in the monkey and in your mind will never be happy with just one more. So like there's the map. There's probably another map somewhere nearby of like why everything is happening. Those things are the, the reflections that you keep going back to in your mind, honestly. And you've got to stop returning to those. You got to be willing and dedicated to do no harm moving forward and in good faith. That therefore means you're going to focus on these signs of personal growth, which is a personal thing. It does not have anything to do. It's personal. So I wouldn't take it personally if someone else has like a different understanding of desire or um, desires to do something different than what you do. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you have different pathways, different mental channels that you have either accustom yourself with as a beat, a, a path well beaten, you know, or maybe you've not. And that's completely up to you. I don't, I mean, 
I don't think anyone really wants to go down a path that they don't want to go down. So you don't have to choose. You can just let your senses, your desires lead you and try to let your honesty within your heart space rather than your restless mind, rather than it being a, you know, a squirrel moment. Um, no offense to the squirrels, just that, you know, we're not going out there for just for a nut today. We don't want to be crazy about it. It's just, it just has to do with um this, yes, throwing shade. So this is not pleasure or pain. This is understanding that um when you take communion with somebody, really there's communion could be seen in so many different ways. If we um, commune over the calms, it's a calm union. It's a connection over the calm. Okay. It's a connection. It's a tapping, right? Tapping of the um, barrel of wine. Yes. We then bitch to each other <laughs> over the phone about, um, I heard it through the grapevine, right? And things get passed down, um, characteristics to you. So, so do mannerisms, so do traits, so do actual understandings of um, politics, religion, um, gender roles, all of these spe specified oopsie moments um, where we basically just separate each other from each other. Signs of personal growth as it comes to this mapping out, honestly, of all of these um, prolific kind of, uh, I'd even say this is almost technology that came from above. And it wasn't self-flagellating mine, like it really did happen at some point. Um, there's this, there was a reading that I did for one of the zodiac signs, and I can't remember which one, to be honest. Excuse me for my blanking out on that. However, there was a third cubit that was um, up for, it was not needing to choose one way or the other. And I feel like this could either be the path that you choose. You chose one or the other, or you chose neither. And ironically enough, this goes sideways either way on both sides. You, you know what I'm saying? There's a, a need for this it's almost a cleansing of the water. I just want to say it's like a Brita filter. What was that? Okay. So this is right underneath the signs of personal growth though. So there is something like if there was something in the water, we have now figured out a Brita filter so that everyone can drink water without um, diluting themselves or, um, you know, completely, I guess, I don't want to say, I don't want to say that dehydrating yourselves, whatever. Um, the point is here that you got a like if you were going to give water for people, water for people, um, this would be it. You'd want to unleash that. It's kind of like a dam breaking, um, that that breaking, releasing the restless mind from its forever loop or its infinite its infinity loop, where. You, you know, there's two sides of the brain, but there's also this wild animal that could just be like, it's a she-wolf that's hunting for an outlet. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a um, natural inclination. And it's uh, not about your, it's not about pleasure and pain. It's just about survival of the fittest while evolution is taking place. Maybe survival of the fittest is part of that, but that doesn't mean that the, it's the only part of that. Where we come back around to these things not needing to be mutually exclusive, okay? There's some reason I need to continue to harp on the fact that these things are not mutually exclusive. You either make up your mind or you don't, and it doesn't have to mean that you're excluded. It just means that you're... so your level of expertise will be noted. The audience does not know, they don't have a level of expertise as the actors, the performers, the trained individuals who have had years of practice, okay? They just don't. And also they've paid good money to go sit and do nothing and not have to be the expert for the evening. So let's think about both sides of that.
then there are the actors who, paid or not paid, are performing as vulnerable individuals who are willing and ready to be judged. I do believe I just referred to this reading in particular. Here we've got um, Ghostlands in the reverse. This is Ghostlands with an S. This is number 17 in the reverse. There's something about like a portal opening. Do you see that? So this is this all of a sudden looks like a tuning pitchfork that's been gong. And this is like the gong or like a like a like the striking of a gong or wow I wish I could turn my camera around and have a Moroccan lamp that is swinging it's mostly because my cat just ran into it she's having one of those zoomy moments but that's the moment is in it's a vibrational pulse throughout um I, I do want to say ethereal or um ancestral planes that's very strange plane i see literally now i'm seeing airplanes going through these oh oh okay this is like as if i was the um the flight attendant right you can hear my cat digging through the receipts right now i swear she just was i swear she just was Ophelia, thank you. Come over here. Come in. Those aren't for you. Thank you. I'm telling you right now that there's um something about like, yeah, it's almost like finding receipts for so many things within an entire deck. That's what she was just showing was that there's like a, there's a way that you can almost like summon. There's been, oh, that's what she's trying to say. There's already been a summoning of energy. It's been um, this kind of uh, reckless oops, uh, throwing shade at one another um, as in the number one priority needs to stop. This do no harm has everything to do with the toning it's toning yourself, like making your body strong. It's tuning your mental pitchfork to a new frequency that can be uh, worked with rather than against. It's the same thing. So um, the decision to do no harm comes along with a constant decision to make a, a effort at personal growth. And that means um, accepting that you've got to make a choice sometimes when you really don't want to. And then also um, accepting that this frequency gives you the freedom of either perceiving that third cubit, which you can see here, it is a butterfly, a small butterfly. I do want to say it's the Mandela moment where you don't have to experience either if they're both too traumatic or something. Um, let's get one from this. Yeah, okay. So this is what we're, I just said it was a tuning, like a, a pitchfork, a tuning pitchfork. You can literally hear the frequency, the resonancy, the vibrational butterflies that are in your stomach. Um, I do mean that quite literally, this is um, vegetables. I was just talking about how you can hear ancestral frequencies from this vibrational, it's like fans. Oh, I can just feel like the fans of, um, you know when they say butterfly kisses on your cheeks? Uh, that's I'm feeling those at the moment. Um, that's what this is. It's it's maybe you're a really beautiful singer. Um, you've got a, a really great tone of voice. People love listening to you. It's like a, that you could waken. Uh, maybe your voice is horrible. You know, um, it, maybe you could waken the dead. 
Um, but maybe you could also be singing like an angel. So it's like kind of angels and demons energy going on right here. Um, a lot of also just like a progressive, um, do no harm, do not steal. This is kind of the monkey do, monkey see energy that we were just reading about. Yeah, this is with Restless Mind, that number eight. Prior to all of this, uh, oh, look, we ate. In all honesty, you need water. All you need is water and vegetables. It's like, all you really need is that to see personal growth, okay? So all of these things have come together for you to understand the conceptual mind. This is all for divine feminine, by the way. I don't think I've emphasized that enough. Let me get one more for conceptual mind and then, okay. And with, uh, this is the chariot card. So this is uh, cancer. If you don't know, the chariot card represents cancers, the crab. Um, this is conceptual mind number 16. Your mind, is your mind messing you up? It's a question. This has to do with self-judgment. <laughs> this has to do with higher and lower knowledge. It has to do with what's on top of both. And in this specific case, the best of both is what is going on on your higher self. You're in with new whatever. You're in with old. You're in with um in with it. Um I I I don't know why that Kid Rock song um bow with a bow to dang dang diggy 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 such a boogie just don't drop the boogie yeah there's something about that but it's like almost i don't even hear the words of that song right now i'm not hearing any words all i'm hearing is that continuous loop of like a beat or a sound um that's kind of what this is it's being able to like actually be almost like pitch perfect which is really sexy, but also almost not, it's almost being able to hear like dog whistles. So I don't know if you've ever seen Homeward Bound, but they have a dog whistle and they're trying to get their dogs to come back to the house. So they're whistling and they're whistling and they end up getting one cat and one dog back, but there's another dog that just seems to be missing seems to not be like in the yard anymore. And they're like, oh, maybe he's just too old, maybe blah, blah, blah. Well, lo and behold, um, they continue using this kind of, they don't dog whistle the whole time, okay? But they, they were up at a cabin for a moment and they were dog whistling. And the dog actually could hear them to a certain degree, you know? Um, the other dogs could as well, but it's, it's about intuitively listening at like a dog whistle on frequencies that you've never perceived before. So that's this energy here. I'm sorry, I'm just putting this on the table so that we can explore that specifically. This is moving forward for you. Divine Feminine. I'm using First Bay by Nadia Turner. Uh, give us one finally clarifying or insignificant piece of information needed at this point in time. There's something about an apple. Um, you could be listening to like um, a lot of music or watching a lot of movies. Something about uh, like using a, an Apple device. I don't know why that's significant. I'm going to shuffle this. Just to get rid of kind of that energy of specifically one, um, one type of technology. Sometimes it's easy to get caught up on that. I don't want to, I prefer to keep the energies opened. All right, so this is three coming out. I'll just take what's on top. This is walk around the wind. The raven shows the way. Be courageous. Change <clears throat> and chance can bring exciting wonders. So I am hearing like right here, there's 
if you can see this little man, there's a, actually a little dude writing right there on the crow, or the in this case, the raven, right? The crow, the raven, and the um, walker on the wind, in this case, is kind of like being a skinwalker. I know that sounds really creepy, but I'm going to explain a little bit. This is spiny sister in reverse. Yeah, so there's this is not something that you... probably would want to, like, um, and it's like encountering a horde of, um, walking dead, but skinwalkers are kind of, um, in the, some of the final seasons of walking dead, there is a couple that just skin humans and then wear their skin, like the walker's skin, basically. And they, it makes them smell like them. They can just walk amongst them. It's kind of that energy. Um, this is what is meant by that. There, there's going to have to be some type of almost, I don't want to say it's gut-wrenching, but it's kind of like having to cross a field or something like that full of walkers. And it's either you, you're going to figure out how to grit your teeth and, like, go through the sewer. Maybe you have to walk through, like, sewage. Or maybe you got to put on a skin and walk through skin walkers. Or maybe you got to go up in the sky, and that's going to cause, like, firework-like attention that um, basically is alerting people to the fact that you're, like, uh, you know, like... <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like there's, you have a very slim, like, uh, focus point, your target is very, very narrow. And if you don't hit that narrow window, then there's really no choice left. Or maybe the only choice is, um, there's no choice. Like there's failure is not an option is what I'm hearing right now. Um, so let's see what's behind this because it's, I'm now curious to know. I feel like this ear is almost, uh, like it, yeah, 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 you, you get taxed. It's like a game where you get taxed if you hit either side, right? It's like ping pong ball or something. Ping ball? Where the, wall ball? Where you have like the little wall and you move it, never mind. So the other two that came out is the troll thing. Which is like crazy because, yeah, just it going along with like having to troll people to get by. That's that's basically like being a skinwalker. If you've never seen Skinwalker Ranch, spiritual presence and um, understanding evil versus good is not everyone's cup of tea. You know what I'm saying? That's not for the the week of heart, stomach, mind, body, soul, all that. So that's what I'm saying, is that there's going to be balance here. You're going to learn how to um, basically stay, stay in your in your suit all day long, you know what I mean? And figure out how it feels to walk in someone else's shoes or if that's what you're committed to and their skin um the last one here is the mandragora mother find the secrets hidden in the brambles hmm. mandragora Man, I don't know what a mandragora is, but <clears throat> I know what it reminds me of. And that's a, honestly, angora carpet. <laughs> I've only ever seen one of those in my entire life. And I was absolutely flabbergasted. Like, I was like, those are rabbits? Like, we're walking on a carpet that is made out of rabbit. That was, it's kind of like having your first escargot. If, if no one, 
prepares you for that moment, it's quite jarring to one's existence to realize you're actively, you know, eating a snail. Something you would never really nail down by yourself. It's like a fact of an ingredient or something of um, a double-edged sword, divine feminine. But it's your choice. And that's the point of this reading. You need to listen to your, yeah. Okay, listen to your body. When it comes to, it says, if I started apologizing, and be really busy all the time. So it doesn't matter what you're hearing, whether it's like, um, whether your body is saying, hey, go reproduce or hey, keep it to yourself doesn't matter it honestly really doesn't it's in with the best of both and that's gonna be the case moving forward these are the three ladies that you could be one is i mean this this is basically getting down and dirty whichever way you decide to go it's basically saying um dig in whatever if you had three different uh flavors of ice cream that you could choose pick the one that you like the most and absolutely go go completely ham okay there's the raven in reverse because you won't even be able it's, it's going to leave you speechless okay and it doesn't have anything to do with anyone else outside of yourself so please don't look at it like this um this this woman is literally planting trees in her own garden minding her own business okay her own business she doesn't have ravens or crows or anything else and she doesn't have to use skin walking. I mean, maybe she can, but she just chooses not to. This is the type of skin walking that we're doing today. There will be no furs, boots with the nothing, okay? It's not going to be cold outside. It's going to be nice uh, gardening day. And maybe we're having like a vegetarian day, okay? Every once in a while, good to do a little cleanse clear out the system. So this is the troll fay. This troll fay, I don't know why, but it does look like he's wearing like a fur, a fur jacket, I think. Yep. With like teeth on a necklace. And he's like, you know, sitting there repping his set. So this, that's fine. Okay. But this is what it says. Follow the secret signs as treasures can be found where you least expect them, right? So although this guy has really a lot of garb going on, what catches my personal eye, divine feminine, is the fact that there's this moon that's kind of just like directly over his head, right down the center, which is what we're looking at right here. I almost feel like we're looking at the profile of this dude right here, okay? It's like we're seeing his ear. Okay, let me, let me see if I can do this. So we're seeing his ear. We're seeing what, what his face purportedly looks like, you know, head on, right? Then we're also seeing these two parts of his brain that are coalescing together. This is the tuning pitchfork between self and higher self. You see how he's got his little, he's got his little uh, symbols up, right? Okay. So all that's really sexy to listen to, all this tuning of self and attunement of self. It's atonement, okay? If you've never seen that movie called Atonement, that's what this is. It's actually a picture of atonement. And for divine feminines, there's something about Kegel or a key moment, a key, um, like you're going to bear down on something. There was a lot of uh, Braxton Hicks kind of music with Tamar Braxton coming through right now. Um, this is the walk around the wind energy and you being able to take that wind energy and ground it. Okay. So I don't know if you know about photosynthesis or chlorophyll or that entire exchange of um, light, photons of light as it pertains to uh, feeding oxygen back into plants. 
that are also carbon-based life forms, but that actually breathe backwards from us. Yeah. Using sunlight, oxygen, water, and chlorophyll, basically. So, um, yeah, yeah. The short and the long of it. I was going to really, really break it down. Then we're going to say this is the upper portion. This is our, you know, on our face or on our head somewhere, right? <laughs> then we've got best of both worlds. So you're allowed to be completely woman. Okay. And then you can also be completely woman. It really doesn't matter. Either way, it sounds like you're a feminine, like a female or something. So however you identify, well, whatever reason that would be, there's the there's the rest of us listening to those reasons. And uh, whatever atonement you have to do is up to you. How's that? Mm -hmm. I am hearing um, three little birds. Set on my doorstep. I don't know why, but I'm here. I'm saying this is choice one, two, and three. You don't have to go towards four. You understand? Three little birds. Okay. This is the um the tree that you're growing, and that's how many different branches. One, two, three. It's got three branches, three complete branches that it's growing off of at this point or feeding off of, right? And that's that troll energy. So ancient ancestral energy being embodied within the sacred, divine, feminine, energetic forces, rooted, grounded, and then also aired. So spoken about, thought about, um, Just feels like you got some, some things going on right now, okay? And I don't think you're really talking too much about it, which is probably, you know. All natural. 